it's all good. Uh, it's not bad. Uh, you can make the money back, though. That's the good part. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no. It's not hard. You know, it was just 100. Oh, okay, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, you know. So if I you do, you use the good money management uh, on your account, mm. you should be fine. Yeah. But I think, personally, I think 100 million account is heavy at the moment. That's oh, yeah, that's right. Mm. But uh, we work it. I mean, I'll speak to you privately and then we'll, we'll find a way to work it, uh, work around it and make, make things work better. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah uh, it will work I mean, yeah. yeah in the meantime though the, the, the first thing I want to do this week is is there any actually things that anybody need assistance with in general apart from uh, you know analyzing the trade this week because what I noticed is that we've been going through you know series that we've been analyzing trades and just you know putting out trades and everything but we haven't been addressing what people have been facing you know like uh, what's the challenges you're having what do you need assistance with you know, those kind of thing, you know, is what I, I'm, I'm about this time around. Wait, what? Can't get in? You know, is there any questions or anything you need assistance with? I think everyone's okay. <laughs> and I, I really doubt that. I really doubt that. You guys have to think about it. Like, there must be something, you know. Something that you like, you want to know in terms of the market, maybe it's inflation rate, maybe, you know, I don't know, but there's, there's definitely something. You understand? There's definitely something. Because I personally still have things I want to know in the market, like, uh, you know, level two other book and uh, market depth and all that kind of stuff, you know, those advanced level good stuff. But... I'm guessing nobody wants to say they have anything they need to learn. So I can assume that you guys know everything about the market. <laughs> not me, not me, bro. <laughs> I need help with everything. I'm about for it, you know. Okay. If you guys I wanna know what you know. Hey, hi. hey how you doing? She know what? I'm fine, fine. How are you? Bro, gold is going like uh, going to the sky. Yes, yes. Uh, I was aware of that. I believe let us know that gold actually skyrocketed. <laughs> it's not a massive move to the upside, and that's beautiful to be quite frank. But you know, if you get caught out on the wrong part, that will have been very, very um, painful. That will have been very, very painful. Um, but it's all good. I mean, it's all good. It's all love. Uh, I haven't traded gold, though. I mean, if you looked at the seasonal, the seasonal said gold is still going to keep going up. So gold is still doing that. And we expected it to on the 25th or uh, 28, basically. And then we should, see, we should see a drop down. Did I just lose the internet connection? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, okay. I thought I lost the internet connection. It shows me my internet is unstable or something like that. So I thought I lost the connection for a second. But yeah, uh, that's it. So my question is, guys, like, do you have anything you actually want to know about? Like, is there anything you're having issues with? Maybe stop loss, take profit, you know, how to do money management, you know, anything in general. Like, I want to base today's webinar on that because it's all fine and easy to call out trades. But I noticed last week when we called out, um, a trade. I can't remember who called the trade up. It might have been uh, me or it might have been Cotland. I think it was a GBP USD. Hey, yesterday, yesterday, uh, yes, last week GBP USD was also awesome, man. Yes, yeah, we took that trade. I saw your profit. Yeah, it was very nice. Yeah, yeah, it was very beautiful trade. <laughs> yeah. But what I, I noticed is before the move happened, right, a lot of people were skeptical. Oh, is this still going in that direction? What should I do? All of that stuff, you know. And that's made me think, you know, it's made me think that, you know, a lot of people don't understand the psychology of the market. Uh, okay, nice one, Abel. I will address that in a second. Thank you very much. And a lot of people don't understand the psychology of the market. The market is bound to always pull back. The market is going to test you to, you know, to, to actually see if you know what you're doing or if you're sure of the direction you're going to. That happens every time. You understand? And, and the thing is, when you have a small pullback, you have to learn not to doubt your strategy. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, always have a stop loss in play, you know, but do not doubt your strategy. Always go for it regardless. 100% in. If you're not sure of something, do not trade it at all. And if you're sure, be 100% in that trade. Don't try to, 
you know, try to doubt yourself in the middle of the trade because doubting yourself in the middle of a trade will kill your account. And that's the one thing. I saw that last week and I was like, I, I didn't respond. I didn't respond at all to any of the, you know, any of the messages that I posted today about, oh, is the trade going to happen or is it not going to happen? If I responded or if I reacted and come out of that trade, I wouldn't have made the profit I've made. You understand? But you have to learn how to stick with your strategy, guys. You have to learn how to be one with yourself when you're trading because trading is a psychological game. And I don't know if I posted this, um, someone shared something on Twitter and um, I don't know if I posted it on Telegram. I think I might have, but you know, even if you have a 75% win rate in your trade, regardless of how high your win ratio is, if you take a loss and you're not prepared for it psychologically, you will lose your entire account. The trading game is about, you know, taking small losses and taking massive wins. That's what it's about. And that will lead me to the option of entry, uh, which Abel asked for. So, Abel, you want to know about entries. Now, I presume you don't have the indicators, right? So, if you don't have the indicators, let's say, for example, uh, we're taking gold, for example, as a want to look for entries. And we say we haven't seen, we haven't mm -hmm. seen this, side, this side of the market. You can see my screen, right? Let me just you know, keep talking. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, so like, let's say you want to enter somewhere around the strike. The first thing you should first identify is your pullback levels. So where's your support? Let's see where you buy this asset. You know, you identify where your support is and your second support is down there. And your third is Now, the main reason I selected, I selected right the tip here, the middle here, and the bottom here is this. If the market does a double bottom, you get a good entry from a double bottom. And in most cases, market comes back and retrace and check for the tip of an asset. So wherever the support is, market comes back to tap for the tip. And if it doesn't tap for the tip, it goes for the body in most cases. It's not 100%. It does that in most cases, right? And buy and sell stuff. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the question, Romain. I'll address that shortly now. So basically, I take this three parts, you know, I take this three parts in the market. And the main reason I take all of them is basically because, you know, right here is the support level as a double bottom. Right here is price testing the body of the candle right there. And right here is the tip of the candle. Now, as market transpires, right? I will be patient. When market touched the tip of this candle, if I went for the tip and take my entry, my stop loss will be about five to 10 pips away from my entry from the tip. So let me just switch to a smaller time frame. So this is the tip right here, right? Which we drew on the daily chart. Now, if market comes around here and touch the tip, my stop loss will be five to 10 pips below the tip, okay? What I want to see as price touches that tip is a reaction. I want to see some sort of reaction, price slowing down. If price does not slow down or, you know, breaks it, let's say the four hour candle breaks below this tip, I will take that loss of 10 pips, okay? Take that loss of 10 pips and walk away. You know what I'm saying? Wait for the next level, which is here, okay? And go for it again. Now, when you go for it at this level, for example, now this is just examples I'm speaking about. If you go for it at this level, your stop loss should always still be about 10 pips away from that entry zone. Okay. Now, in this scenario, we are lucky at the first part, that's where your, you know, where the price, price broke out of it and price tested this level right here, pulled back and tested the level right here, which your stop loss from the tip should have been about 10 pips. You know, around somewhere around here. You know, let's see around, around, um, oh, that's too far, around somewhere around here, which price almost got there, but it didn't quite get there and price pulled away till it got to this candle where you get, you could have got raided. Now, once price pulled away, let's, if we estimate the pip, at this point, you're already 120 pips in profit because this is gold. You risk 10 pips to take 120, or let's say you couldn't even take the entire 120 you took maybe, or let's say right here, you took 71 pips. Okay, worst case scenario, you took 71 pips, right? You should put your stop loss at a higher level. At that 71 pips, your stop loss should be somewhere higher. You shouldn't leave your stop loss lower here anymore because you're already 71 pips in profit. You can either use your ATR to calculate the average moving of the candle 
and then place your stop loss according to that or just use your eyes basically look for the next support zone on a lower time frame so let me just pop to a slightly lower time frame i think the price broke out right here so my stop loss will have been maybe somewhere around uh so we moved right here price went up i'll have moved my stop losses somewhere around maybe here five three pips now the main reason i said that is this right for those guys that have the ea if you notice the settings in your in your ea i'm not sure if i did this uh, this way i have it somewhere like this once price moved 10 pips into profit lock six pips but what i do in my case when i trade is when price moved 10 pips into profit i always lock two pips in that's just the way I trade. I don't mind, you know, taking two pips, even if it's a small amount of profit. So as price moved away from you, you should have been locked into profit. And when you're locked into profit, what happens is that if you get kicked out of that trade, wait, let price retest that zone again, take the trade again, lock yourself in. You get kicked out again, take the price again from there, get kicked out. Eventually what happens is that the market won't kick you out at one point and you could enter maybe let's say you entered around here and you'll put your stop loss somewhere around here and price uh you know your stop loss is initially 10 pips away from it let's say around um i'll just calculate 10 pips around here you understand so the stop loss was here you didn't get rated right here and once price moved from here to around here you already locked in two pips as i did or in the ea case which is six pips right here you still didn't get rated and guess what once price broke away you'll be profiting all the way through. The thing is, do not get attached to your positions. There's no point. There's no point getting attached to your position. Attachment in this game will get your account blown. Don't get attached to it. Find a support level and go with that level. And if you don't have a, you know, if you don't know how to draw your support level, go on Google and type in support and resistance MT4 indicator. And you have so many indicators that's gonna help you on support and resistance on that level. And always just put your stop loss about 10 pips away from there. Eventually, you're going to get a good entry, which even if you've taken 20, 30 pips loss, by the time you're profiting 70, 80, 90, 100 pips, or maybe in this case, maybe even over 400 pips, what's 10, 20, 30 pips losses to 400 pips profit? It's absolutely nothing, okay? And that's how we deal with entries uh, in terms of that, Abel, okay? Now, um, you want to know about sell limits, uh, Romain, right? So sell limits, buy limits, and buy and sell stops. And uh, yes, um, sell limits, buy limits, and all of that stuff, you know, the pending orders can improve, can actually definitely improve your, your trading, 100%. Now, that being said, you have to be careful. If you go in with, you know, sell limit, buy limit, you know, and all of that stuff, you have to always have a stop loss and a take profit in place. Do not think about it twice. Okay. Have a stop loss and a take profit in place. Do not enter with, with, with them without having those, you know, security measures in place because what tends to happen is you're going to get raided in most cases and the market in every case is anyway, market, you always get raided. And that's why people lose money because of the raids. You're welcome. Abel. You know, that's why a lot of people lose money because of the raids. You have to be prepared to get rated. So let's say, for example, this same example. Let's say right here when market broke away, you notice you missed a trade of this section. You put your buy limit right here. You sell uh, and you, you buy. Your, you put your buy limit right here. Your stop loss should be somewhere below. Okay, stop loss should be somewhere below ten pips as well. You know, right here should be your stop loss, and your take profit. I don't know whatever you're aiming for, wherever you're aiming it for, your take profit should be set right. And what happens is when market comes back and retest that, that zone for you, because in, in that situation, let's say you don't have a trailing stop or you don't lock your profit, you know, as price moved away, you were away from your computer. When price moved into that zone, it will have triggered your pending order. Now there's situations where price moves and try to trigger your pending order, but because of the broker spread, you don't get triggered. That's happened to me so many times, especially when you get spots on entries, the brokers don't take their stuff. In that situation, the trade tends to walk away from you. What you should do when the trade walks away from you is walk away from the trade too. Don't chase the trade. Your perfect entry was there and you know you didn't get triggered because of you know brokers are trying to check their spread. Let it go and you just you know uh, you, you find another trade, trade another trade. Okay, but in your situation, whatever pending order you choose to use, put it there and put your stop loss below it. 
And once price, you know, has moved into your, your pending order and kicked off in your direction, what you should do is always lock your trade into profit. Even if it's two pips or pip or even a break even, lock that trade into profit so the market don't take that, you know, take that trade and turn it into a loss trade for you. You can always get entries. That's the thing you have to understand. You can always get entries, but you know, you can always take losses if you don't have stop losses in place or break, if you're not break even. Okay. And that's, that's how that works. You understand? So always, if you're using your pending orders, make sure you set your, you know, make sure you set your stop loss in place and you'll take profit also in place. I hope that answers the question for you, Romain. Okay. And if I don't answer that question, just, uh, you know, just ask the question again and I would go over it again so far um, to you so I can actually explain it to you, understand it. Okay. And, and that's what it is, guys. The same thing for everybody. Don't be afraid, you know, don't be afraid to lose a trade. Never, never be afraid to lose a trade. You know, we will all lose trades. That's, that's what the game is. We can't get 100%. I don't know whoever has 100% in this. If you're not from the CBN that has a backdoor information about a trade, you understand, you can't get 100% all the time. Even the big banks lose money. You understand, banks like Barclays, HSBC, Satanda, whatever bank you use around the world, Bank of America, we all lose money in this game. That's just what it is. Nike, you can be a company, Nike, Adidas, whatever company you are, Apple, you know, Amazon, we all lose money in this. But they're not scared to lose money. You understand? They don't trade like us, you know, they trade because they need the currency. But we retail, uh, retail traders have to trade wisely, you understand? And don't let the big boys take our money away from us. Understand? So 10 pips, stop loss, 10, 15 pips, stop loss is perfectly enough. Don't watch your trade go out of profit and goes into your loss zone. Once you're properly in profit, lock your trade in. You don't mind going into that trade 100 times after. So if it doesn't raid you and take off your money that 100 times, you understand? You'll be fine. Okay, small losses, big wins. Risk 10 pips, take 400 pips. Take 100 pips, 300 pips. That's how it should work, okay? Risk 30 pips, take 100, 200, 300 pips. That's how that works, okay? And on that note, is there any more questions um, before I actually uh, look into something else? We kind of lost you, or I lost you at least. Oh, oh. And yeah, we lost. Oh, damn. Uh, when was the last time you heard me? Uh, uh, like yeah, thirty five. seconds ago, <laughs> sir. One minute ago, maybe one minute. <laughs> one minute, oh, one minute, Dale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, all I was just saying is, you know, everybody loses in this market, and you know, it happens to everybody. So don't be scared to lose money. Okay. Just make sure that if you're losing, you take small losses, ten, twenty, thirty pips maximum. And you make sure that your profit is about 100, 200, 300 pips. So always, always win big and lose small. Every time. That's what it's about. Five. Sorry? Are uh, you? Yeah, yeah. What did you say? I didn't hear that. Uh. Romain, you were trying to say something. No, 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 bro. It's okay. I was, it's okay, bro. Ah, uh, okay, okay. No problem. Yeah. Uh, all right, so it's, it's about, you know, Losing small, winning big. That's what this game is about. Lose small, win big. Lose small, win big. You know, there's nothing more than that. And we're lucky we have a good percentage of win. You understand? So regardless, even if you lose one or two trades, what, what tends to happen is you're going you're gonna to always win big. You're going to always win big when the big time comes. You understand? So in a next trade or, you know, the trade after that, you're definitely going to win. So there's no point of, you know, being scared of lo losses at all because you'll always make the money back. Uh, we all have that, you know, that stuff in us. We don't want to lose one penny in this game. But the truth is, you're always going to lose some pennies, man. You're always going to lose it. So there's no point trying to fight it. Okay. Now, uh, this week's yeah. trade, um, I haven't analyzed anything this week because I want to speak to you guys. I want to know exactly what everybody's doing. But I was just running through the season. I was just a few moments ago, and I saw this. I don't know if anyone has seen this from the group. Cotton, were you able to see this? Mukta? Is Mukta here? You Which uh, nah, I haven't I'm, done the analysis, I've been out. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, you guys, no, no one has checked NZD. You're welcome, man. Uh, I did, I just didn't really find uh, what I liked, you but found I mean, 
<clears throat> no, not not through NZD. No, that's what I was saying. I, I didn't really like it. Okay, you didn't really like it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that because of the COT uh, C um, probability? Uh, I it was probability. I didn't even check COT. Um, I just I also just didn't like the the seasonal. I think too. I mean, like yeah, it looks nice, but it didn't match up with anything. Okay, okay, okay. I will get back to that in a second. Now, I'll just do whatever you guys like this week. Honestly, you guys are taking control from me this week. And then, yeah, yeah. I, see I want to check the seasonal. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll check gold in a second. I'll check gold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. I see your chart. Don't worry. Um, when is the downfall coming in gold? I want to check that. Gold. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll, yeah. I would. I'll let you know. Don't worry. Uh, so uh, the first thing is, uh, Aslan wanted to know about exit. Okay, exit points. Now, let's say, you see, this is the thing, right? We don't know the exact ex exit point. I have to be honest with you. Now, the best bet for exit points are the same thing we just did right here. Exactly the same thing, but the inverse. Now, let's say I'm going to delete all of this right here. Now, let's say uh, we know an asset is going to go up for a few days, right? We don't know how long, you know, even though the seasonal say is going to go for 10 days straight. What happens is sometimes the market can complete the move within five days and start dropping before that, you know, the entire 10 days. So what I'm, I'm on it is like, Take as much as you can and leave the rest, you know, leave the rest for everybody else. Now, let's say we, we, we're looking to buy from, let's say from the body right here. My first take profit will be the body of the next candle right here, the next resistance right here. My second take profit will be the tip right here. And the third one, I will trail my stop. I will trail my stop. Now, the, the, the thing with this is this, right? When you choose an exit, you have to, if you're buying, for example, you have to find the, the, the resistance point. Now, depending on the time frame you analyze your chart, your, your trade from, that will, then that will actually depend on your take profit zone. Okay. Now, the best thing I always figure is analyze from a higher time frame, guys. Higher time frame is your best bet because one single candle on a higher time frame will make you more than what you have analyzed on a one hour time frame. The market moves more daily than it does on, you know, on a one hour or four hour. So what, what tends to happen is in this case, for example, this gold trade, so gold on the, on the 5th right here, February, you see an up move. So let me go back to gold right here. So now as you can see, you can watch gold on this as well. I'm, I'm killing two beds with one stone right here. So um, right here, at this point right here on the sixth, right? We see the sixth right here. Gold is meant to rally up, okay? And before we see any pullback on the 11th, any minor pullback on the 11th. So if we go back to, you know, seasonal right here. So the sixth is right here, right? This was exactly, you know, the fifth price did what it did right here. But the sixth, if we looked at gold and actually traded gold, you know, we'll have entered gold right there. Now look what happened, you know? Ended right here, but look at the level that I said, which come out right at the close of 11. Guess what happened? Price has already pulled back already, but you will have still profited about 102 pips. If you're using the seasonal, you probably have exit at the start of 11, so saving you some pips, which is 154 pips. Now, the thing you should have done in this situation is if you're entering on this day around this zone right here, and you know the 11th is your exit point. Okay, and I, and I know some people don't have access to the seasonal. Let's just say you, you have a rough, you know, a long-term trade on this. What you should first look for is the resistance point. Your first resistance is somewhere around here, right? This will have been your first take profit. Your second take profit will have been here, the tip of the candle. Go for the double top, okay? And your third take profit will have been free floating. Now, let's say you just want one take profit, okay? But it's still long-term trade. I would look for the closest resistance point and take my profit at that closest resistance point and let the rest go okay that's what it is so if i enter right here looking at this chart just looking prior to it so let's say i entered at this zone right here i'm trying to move the chart a little bit so i see what i'm seeing ah it's moving in doubles okay so let's say i moved i entered my trade somewhere around here the next resistance point is here 
You remember I told you there's three resistance, the tip, the body, and the top, right? Now, um, three supports as I did the last time. So in this case though, because I see the wig poking out right here, I would go for the body in this situation. You understand? Or you can go for the tip of the first candle, but if you want to go for the tip, I'd rather go for the tip of the second candle. That's how it is because of the three tips right there, I'll go for, you know, this, the middle tip. Now, if there's one tip right there, I'll go for the first tip, okay? But in this scenario, I'll go for the body because I see it's more consistent. You know, it's more consistent in this area. You can see right here, the candle stopped there, candle stopped here, candle stopped here, stopped here, and this candle also stopped there. So I'll have gone for the body right here. So I'll have entered somewhere around here and exit around here, taking 179 pips and walk away. Regardless of all this breakout and all the move that's happened, I will take this amount of pips, this 170 some pips, 171 pips, and I'll be satisfied with it. Okay, take that 171 pips, walk away. And then if your analysis then tells you, you know, you need to go further up, just wait, reanalyze. What would you do in this case? Find the next support zone right here, the tip or the body, whichever you choose. You can go for the tip right here or the body or the lower section. In which case, in this scenario, it went for the tip in this scenario. Now, remember, there's just only one tip right here. There's no multiple tips. If there was three tips, at this candle, I would have gone for the middle tip, okay, or the body. I won't go for the first tip, but if there's only one candle right there, I'll go for that one candle tip, and which is this one, and then I'll go again. But this time around, since I've taken profit around here, guess where my next take profit will be? My next take profit will be the top right here at this zone. I was taking my profit away from here because I wouldn't be thinking the, the market would, you know, Go beyond all this. I wouldn't think that. I'll just take my profit around here and from here, uh, here, which is another 300 and some pips, and I'll leave the rest alone. I'll leave this 400 and some pips alone. I wouldn't go and chase it anymore. But in, in so doing, what happens is that I've taken 300 and some pips and 100 and something pips right here, making 400 and something. Okay? You know? And then with, with that 400 and something, if I measured it into the trade, I will have taken this much out of the entire asset leaving this much on the table so i've taken over half of the move okay and that's how you know to address that one specifically i hope i answered it as well okay perfect yeah nice thank one. you all right so uh you know i'm gonna check uh i hope i'm pronouncing your name perfectly honestly i do hope so if i don't apologize I do. yeah bro just show me the seasonal when it's going going down Yes, so um, the season of gold will be going down from. Uh, you okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, we're looking from the twenty something. So around here, twenty fifth will be good, but I won't go for the twenty fifth yet because the you know the forty years is giving me something. But I would rather go for twenty eight. I'll go for twenty eight. Twenty eight will be my first yeah. down look into gold. Okay, and uh, what will be the exit point? Which date? Uh, dude, man, <laughs> you just want a big buck right here. I can smell that already out of you. That's the 8th of March. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gold mine, man. I can, I can, I can smell that out of you, man. The 8th of March would be your best bet. 8th of March would be your best bet. So price will probably come back down here. So we're looking about, you know, 400 and some pips, 480 some pips, maybe 500 pips. So the eight will okay, be... Okay, means like gold will be around 15, 90 around. Uh, 15 to 9. Let me... Wait, 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 wait. Oh, well, 1590, what did you say? Yeah, 1590, yep. Yeah, I don't, yeah, around there. You could get there, but I'll, I'll take my profit right here. Yeah. So 486 pips will not be my best bet. Okay. You know, I'll take the profit around that zone and gladly walk away with that because what will happen is I'm gonna see some sort of pullback to the top side. You see, no, you know, till line. till what did till what did gold is showing downfall, man? Till what did gold is showing downfall? Which date? 28. So from 28. 20, I mean, it could from, happen. 28 could starting. Happen. It could happen, it's starting from 24 to 28, so it could be... Okay, until, okay. until, till when? Uh, March, it goes on to the 8th of March. 
So eighth, after, eighth March. Yeah, after the eighth of March, the next fall would be the twelfth of March. Another fall again. Okay, okay. I Means like it will take a small pullback again to up, upside. Then, yeah, then it falls again. Then okay, it okay, 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 okay. Okay, and, and that's what it is. No. Someone wants me to check. Uh, Euro AUD, uh, Euro USD. My bad. So I was looking at USD. Let's go on the daily time frame. So stronger than ever. This one can we look? So after the daily time, the closing. Okay. Uh, so you want GBP, JPY, and Euro USD. So let me let me check the Euro USD. The first thing I'm just gonna do in terms of Euro USD is I'm just gonna check probability first. Okay, just not to check the season when you know go around in circles. Euro USD. Um, so we're in February right now. So the trading day 15th, 16th. So we're looking from 16th trading day. Uh, Euro USD. So Euro USD is looking more to a buy side from the 16th trading day. And we actually have a good run right here. We have like four days run. So Monday to Thursday. Now, don't quote me 100% on this. So I'm just going to make a note of this. Um, so your USD is 16th. Your USD 16th. Okay. Uh, 16th trading day. So that's 16th trading day. And then um, someone wants me to look at uh, GBP JPY. Let me go for GBP JPY. Check that also. Um, GBP JPY. All right. There we go. So 16 trading day. Just want to see if you know we have a good probability first before I have them, you know check that. Um so GBP JPY is telling me more to the sell from the 16 trading day, which is also a very good probability. So um B J P Y sell. So I think the Euro is there was a buy, right? If I'm not mistaken, six from what this one is 17 trading day. If I'm not mistaken, yep. So that's the two right there. Oh, god, there. Okay, Euro JPY 16 to 19. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Cartland, that's perfect. Yes, exactly. So, uh, has anyone actually analyzed the, the trade first? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, no, Cartland just gave me something different. Euro JPY, okay, Euro JPY, okay. Let me do Euro JPY, Euro JPY. So 16th to 19th trading day. Same trading day. Okay. So that's another one there. So we have one, two, three. We have three trades to look at. I want to look at the NZD. I'm going to check the NZD. But Cotland, you spoke about CHF as well. CHF um last week. Yeah. Uh yeah, USD CHF. You're in that trade already, right? Uh, I pulled out when you told me to. I just, but like you said today, this morning, yeah. uh, don't don't get uh, caught up with your position. So I was like, you know what? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not even pissed. I'm not mad at all. If we're going to enter, we enter. If not, we let it go. Exactly. Just let it go. Don't, don't, you know, don't stress about it. So we're looking at the CHF having a fall from around the 24th, which is tomorrow, right? CHF is going to have a fall. But it's going to be a rocky fall, then pull back, then fall again. So this is a type of trade that if you don't know what you're doing, if you have emotional you know, issues with the market, do not trade it. Right? This is an example, guys. You know, like what happened with the GBP coming back, rating everybody. If you're going to trade this, right, you know, you have to be sure 100% with your, with your gut. No matter how much pullback you get, you hold on to that trade. Okay? But still have your stop loss in play. Understand? Don't get shaked up on it or anything, but it will fall. So we're looking for the fall to the second. Now the CHF fall. And the probabilities of that, uh, if I check the probabilities of that one, uh, find USD CHF. Chef, um, this was a good trade, by the way, Colin, because I ain't going to even lie. Like, the way it looks on the chart looks sweet. It looks very, very sweet on the chart. So, yep, so it's a buy in terms of USDCHF, we, which is already what we see. We see the fall of the CHF already, which means USDCHF should go up. So 51%, 51, 51. God damn, it's just 51, though. Not that much, but. It keeps going. Uh, no, 57, 51, 51. Sorry? 
it keeps going after the week after that. Oh damn! Damn, seventy eight, fifty one, fifty one, sixty three. Okay, we still have like we got like eight straight days in this. Whew. man, this thing gonna be sweet. So we have like okay, 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 okay. Here's the CHF. All right. There's so much trade, man. Uh, this is too much trades for me, to be honest. I ain't going to even lie. This is so much. I don't like when trades get too much. I, I get confused. Uh, bye. Okay. Now, these are the trades we're going to look at in the second half of the webinar. So, at this first half, right, I like the fact we spoke about uh, – you know, things that people, you know, need assistance with. And uh, I hope I've been able to address that properly. So in the second half, which I'm going to cut off this webinar right now, in the second half will start again in a second. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to focus more on these asset right here. And if you have another one that you want us to check out, you know, just post it in the second half of it and we'll check them out. So we start off with Euro USD, GBP, JPY you know, Euro JPY and then USD CHF, okay? So I'm going to cut that off now and then we'll start again in a minute. Um, so AUD USD is another one uh, which comes from the 17th. Thank you, Scotland, for that one as well. So the 17th, right? All right, I think, guys, I think quite frankly, if I have another trade, let's just, uh, you know, you can post it, but I'm not sure if I'm going to check it out because, damn, this is five trades right here. I don't even think everyone's going to be trading five trades at the same time. Uh, um, because these these trades are quite long term trades. Uh, anyone has a question? No. Okay, so we start off by checking a seasonal for uh, Euro USD. Now, let me just load the chart. Let me clean this chart up a little bit. Let me chart. Uh, so we start off with Euro USD. You know, uh, the back. Oof. Yeah, nah, man. Let me just load up EMA with this because I don't want to mess up. All right, start off with Euro USD right here, and the first thing I just want to see is, um, do we have any movement prior to this that that's similar with what what the seasonal was saying? Okay, uh, so so Euro USD, we're looking to trade that from the 16th, so 16th trading day, which is if I'm not mistaken, 24th. Okay, we have a down move. Oof. So as Euro has been falling from, let's say around, I'm gonna check, 16th, right? Let's check from the 16th. Oh, this has been falling. Yeah, we did fall. Yeah, we did fall. Uh, and even prior to that, it's been predicting the fall up from around here, around the fifth or the third. Oh my days, you see stuff predicted from the third, between the third and the fifth, right? The four was predicted between the third right here and the fifth right here. And it's meant to bottom out and look at what just happened. We actually missed the straight, I, wow. We turn in the fifth. Even if we didn't go on the third, if we went in the fifth, we will have profited quite a few. You know, and it's still gonna go. Okay, it's not that big. It's two hundred and sixty some pip. We made that last week, so it's all right. Okay, so basically, it's been following it, so that's a good sign. And now we're gonna check. Uh, you no, know, on the twenty fourth, right here. We should see a, a slight move, maybe 25th. It's between 24th, 25th. We should be looking to sell uh, Euro USD. That's what it's saying. Well, let me check the probability again because I'm, I think I wrote down buy for that. So if it's a buy, then um, I'll have to let that trade go regardless. Um, okay. Just checking the probability one more time just to make sure that I'm getting everything in check before I dive into that one. So the first thing's first, I know that with Euro USD, it's saying a buy on the probability. So for this reason, Euro USD is canceled out of the game. We can't, you know, we can't trade Euro USD. We're looking for a sell. So 
we're looking for a sell in this asset. So uh, on that reason, I'm just going to let Euro USD out of the game. We're not going to trade that. You know, I mean, that's the same buy. And quite frankly, the William is also saying buy, but the seasonal is saying sell. Now, they do not correlate with each other. You know, uh, and on that reason, it's very risky for me. That's a very massive risk for me to take. So I would not take that. There's so many other trades on the table. Even though it looks good for a sell, but I wouldn't take that. And let me just check COT just to confirm what's happening with the COT. Uh, they have more position in the buy section on the euro on the COT. So. No, and this is the the one that came on the 18th. So I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't trade that, you know, uh, because the seasonal isn't following it. I wouldn't trade that, you know. They have actually more short power into stuff. So we might actually see the Euro USD turning back up now. And I'm quite familiar with this sign. When the market does down, up, down, up, it, price is most likely switching back to the upside. It does that a lot. I don't know why. It's just a part of now. Look at it right here, down, up, down, up, boom, market goes back. I don't know why, it just does it. No, no, it does. So that one, Euro USD, I wouldn't trade. I look at it again, down, up, down, up, boom, price went back up. So it's most likely going to happen here, you know, down, up, down, up, boom, price going back up. So uh, it's not 100%, guys. Don't, don't quote me on the down, up, down, up stuff. I, I normally suggest, you know, I recommend do something else with it. So um, let's go to the next trade. So the next trade is GBP, JPY. We want to look to sell. Okay. So let's go and check uh, what does the seasonal say for GBP, JPY. Uh, so what's the GBP? All right. I'm just going to switch that to GBP, JPY right here. You guys can still hear me, right? So, because I know I cut off the other time and I was speaking for a while. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Um, so, I just want to switch back to GBP, JPY, see what we can do on this one. Um, basically, the when there's so many trades, I want to look for the one that aligns the best. You know, the ones that align the best is what, uh, you know, what you want to go for. And um, so let's check GBP, JPY. So we want to sell GBP against the JPY, and that will be from the 23rd, which is today, 24th, tomorrow. It looks slightly risky with the five years, but it says we can sell from the 16th, which is good. So I want to see it kind of a drop in the GBP, JPY, maybe from the 16th or something like that. So, so GBP, JPY. Wow. Now, with this one, it's kind of weird. Uh, it's kind of weird with this one because um, now prior to this season, I've been saying, you know, GBP is meant to drop from 16th to around 18th, right? But from the 16th right here, uh, 17th actually we've been seeing wait 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 wait, wait. let me let me go back a little bit so it's meant to draw from 16 to 18 to did that and then 18 we have to have a pull back to 19 and then massive drop from 19 so so he did a small four 18 19 pull so but we didn't have that fall from 19 to 20 and quite frankly you can see the moving average is just on the line there right here so this how this asset looks weak anyway to the upside so i ain't gonna lie about that it looks very weak to the upside we we should see you know a, a fair drop in it but it doesn't really align you know it doesn't really align 100 percent. the william is not saying down either right here so this is very, very high risk. It's still a trade I could take, but it's very, very, very high risk. So on that note, I'm taking this out of the game. GBP JPY is out of the game. So I'm looking at Euro JPY next time. And, uh, it's always good to filter your trades, guys. It's just, you know, it's just what you need to do. Sometimes you might miss a trade or two by filtering it out. But, you know, if I can, you know, clear it out a little bit to get a, a very good trade out of everything else i would gladly take that so the euro is meant to fall from the around the 19th up until the 22nd right 
So we're looking at Euro JPY 19 to 20 seconds. So where's Euro right here? Okay. Nope, it didn't even fall. It tanked basically. This tanked up. So uh, uh, that tanking is very scary. I don't want to see that, you know. But he said it should fall anyway from around 24, 25. And uh, we have that uh, sale on the 16th. So, I mean, this just hit the 200 moving average, and this is within this candle. I would want to sell right here based on technicality, but and I have a little bit of dip right here. So let me just see if I can ignore you know, if I can ignore the, the, the seasonal for a little while right here. Let me check the euro. Uh, the buying more in the euro, that's very dangerous uh, when I'm looking for a sell. So I checked the JPY. Are they buying more in you as well? Yeah, they're buying more in the JPY as well. So in this case, euro JPY would be a trade, but keep this in mind, guys. But it is very, very risky because it hasn't been following what the seasonal says. So the likelihood of it following it continuously is low, very low. So in which situation you can trade this on a sell, but it's very high risk. So if you guys jot this down, you know, this is high risk. I might not even post this back into the group. It depends if I can remember. So high risk, um, you know, it's a high risk sell. If you want to go for it, you know, be my guest. I would move to the USDCHF. So let's check the USDCHF. Uh, basically, I want to see something that matches everything. If it matches everything, that's what I want to take. Uh, this trade is already boxed in between the two moving averages. Uh, so USDCHF, what we're looking to do, we're looking to buy. This looks good because it's already boxed in. So I'm... I'm Presuming I should see this going back up to 200 moving average, then breaking it higher to the upside. But let's just check that. You know how that does the stuff. So with the USD CHF, right? What we want to see is COT. I think they were selling this bad. Yeah, the COT is not looking good. I want to see a sell in this. Ah, they're buying this, which is very bad. So automatically, this is looking like a very high risk trade itself. So. Um, let me check uh, the CHF uh, seasonal. I want to see if it matches anything the market has been doing. Um, so this 23rd. So I want to see like a fall from the 16th right here, at least 16. Then I see a pullback. No. Let me just look for that and then pull back on the 18th. So 16th, I want to see a fall. On the CHF, which means a high, uh, no buy right here. Yeah, then a fall from the a pullback from the 18th, isn't it? Around the 18th, I'll see a pullback to the upside, which means I should see a fall in USD around the 18th to around here. So I can't say specifically 18th because you know we had a dip in in we had a small dip to the upside there, but. 22nd was when they matched the general. So, so 18th, I want to see an up move. 21. Yeah, so that happened. This happened. I mean, this is a very tight one if you look at it. I'm just focusing on the five, uh, on the 15 and, and 40 years, guys. So I can see that. From that 18 to 21, there should be a sharp pullback to the upside, which it's an inverse in this case because we're looking at CHF. So we should see a sharp move to the downside. So, and then after that, everything else, I think everything else aligns with CHF going back up. So, no, this wouldn't be a good trade, guys. Yeah, it doesn't really look good because we're looking at this asset going back up again so if it's going to go back up to the 24th oh shit oh excuse my french so we're looking at it to lose strength again <laughs> we're looking, it's quite confusing when you're doing the opposite way around uh uh so from the 24th we look for a down in the chf so if the chf loses strength from the 24th the usd will gain strength 
So in that case, we're looking at a hop move. Yes, that's correct. The William supports us, the seasonal supports us, uh, probability supports us because we're looking at the just buy from the 17th and it keeps going anyway. So uh, the COT does not support us. So we say this is, it should be a high risk trade, but I'm just going to classify as medium, medium risk. So this is the second trade we can trade. We can take, you know, the buy of uh, USDCHF. We can buy that to the top side. Okay. Um, I can actually check the USD just to do a second backup, you know, a check on that just to make sure that, you know, everything is in alignment. Now, 17th, which is tomorrow. Uh, I would buy this on Tuesday, 17th, by the way. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. 17 trading day should be uh, on the uh, 25th. So 25th to trade this. And this one 24th. I think. Yeah, I think that should be correct. So I just want to check the USD and see what the USD is still doing. So the 23rd. Um, 24th, so tomorrow. So the US is slightly confused tomorrow because of the five years doesn't really align. But everything aligns more on the 25th. So which aligns with the CHF trade we have? But it's giving us that it's going to be a pullback and then we should see up more. So ideally, what we want to see is the uh, market opens, you know, maybe a little bit to the downside, just a tiny bit to the downside. Retest somewhere around here. I think, let me change the four hour time frame. I would like market to retest here. If anything, I told market should come to 200 moving average right here. And also, if you look, it's the exact place the tip. You see the tip right here I was speaking about the other time. Obviously, price came and checked the tip. You know, if you had entered that tip because it was just one tip, right? They're not multiple. You know, but if you want to look at all the small ones and classify them also as a tip, you can go for the middle tip, which is here. You know, if you go for here. You get your entry, which will have been spot on. And if you had set a pending order like remains that you probably won't be able to enter this trade because your broker won't let you in. The entry is too perfect. So if you've gone for the tip, you know, right here, and set your stop loss at, you know, 10 pips below the tip right here, you wouldn't have got rated at all and you will have profited about 80 something pips to the top before this massive pullback. But what I want to see in this situation is price pull back down to the 200 moving average right here. And then we buy from that 200 moving average. That's ideally what I want to see. So, but on Tuesday, I'll wait for Tuesday and see what happens. So, but if price gaps to the downside and gaps exactly on the 200 moving average, you buy exactly from Monday. Okay, and I'll buy that straight up. So, this is a trade I would look to trade. Now, let's go to AUD USD. So, let me just go for AUD USD. Now, what we do with AUD USD, we're looking. Uh, someone called it UD yesterday. I can't remember what we're doing with it. Um, let me go check. Okay, let's check the AUD. US is meant to be getting stronger. So if I'm presuming we should see AUD USD going down, maybe. I don't know. Let's check. <coughs> well, I, I want to buy AUD. You want to buy the AUD? Okay. Yeah, AUD USD buy it. Okay. All right, let's check the let's check the C and uh, the probability and the season as well. So and you do keep in mind that the, the stuff doesn't favor USD this time. The COT doesn't favor USD this time. If anything, it's selling massively. So yeah, AUD got strength, which is good. That's a very good bias for us. And uh, let me check the you know probability. Let's see what the probability say. So from the 17th, which is second, oof, this is good. Now let's see what the AUD said right here. Um 24th, 26th. Ah, this is uh, this is tricky for me. I mean, it does look looks okay on the buy, but ah, uh, no. Let me change it to daily time frame. Uh, the William supports us, but we have a, a slight challenge right here. If you want to buy at all, you want to buy from the 26th, which should be. Wednesday, and that would be here on the 18th trading day, which is 52% chance of a buy, which is good. I mean, it's fair enough, but I wouldn't classify this as a long-term buy, though. 
you know it's gonna move up to 28 like if you look at the you see if you look at the five years it's pretty much flat so if you buy from here from the 26th you can exit by 28 so just two days straight so uh 26 to 28 wednesday to friday so if you buy on wednesday you can exit on friday i mean you can do that for two days but apart from that i mean uh I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't touch this, but, you know, uh, Wednesday to Friday. So, but, um, so that, that will work for you. I mean, it's just a short term, but I, I normally just want three days. I want three days list, but if you want to go for it, it's a trade you can go for, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's okay. I mean, we should see the buy rally up very quickly. So like, you know, go back to 20 moving average somewhere around the zone right here. Or right here, I want it should go beyond here, or maybe around here, maybe you know to take that. That would be you know a way to look at it personally. So you can go for it, but it's uh, it's risky. I I would call it very risky. I would say risky to be honest, uh, because of seasonal. Seasonal is literally my number one go-to material. So I would call it risky. Seasonal is always if seasonal is on point, I, I really classify it as very high risk. You know, but uh, you can still take this. Uh, out of everything, USDCHF is a nice one. So like, I, let me go to the one I just checked, right? Now, we can still check all the CHF assets and see if they are aligned. But the one I'm kind of interested in because I saw a massive fall coming from it is uh, this, NZD. So now I want to see if NZD has moved up in any assets. You know, let me just go. I'll start scanning from the first one. So I want to see GBP going down. Nope, that didn't work. Let me see NZD again. Where? How many NZD do I want to see that going up at one point? Nope, it's been weak. AD, NZD. Uh, no. This asset has been looking like an asset has been beaten. Nope. Whoa. Okay. Nope. NZD doesn't look good. On all I said, it hasn't been following the season. But regardless, we might actually see NZD lose more strength. I don't know what's going on in that country. I might actually have to check. Um, you know it looks like it's going to fall from the seasonal, right? Now, if I check, let me just quickly run through probabilities with it quickly. Because one thing is that sometimes things don't align with the seasonal, but they align with, uh, you know, with every other tool. In which case, if they do, you know, you might be able to predict the move before it happens. So let me just check NZB quickly on this. So 25th, I only have two days fall. I don't want that. I want something straight. Uh, so the next NZD, oh damn. Uh, so NZD JPY. Uh, um, on the 16th. Nope. No, 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 no. I mean, this is how I do my analysis, guys. You know, I just keep going, checking each and every one to make sure that you know I don't miss anything. NZD, JPU, which one? Euro, NZD. So Euro is falling in this case. I don't want it to fall. I want it to rise. So this doesn't look good for NZD at all. How I thought, how I thought, you know, it would be able to fight through it, but doesn't really look good. I'm going to have to research in the news what's going on in that country. There might be something going on. Uh, nope, 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 nope. That's not good. Exactly. Analysis is, you know, it's necessary in this game. If not, eh, you won't lose a lot of money. Uh, I'm going to literally be playing ping pong with you. Um, so NZD has been looking as if it's going to go strong. All right. 
it's literally confused. So I'm not going to... I don't think I'm going to trade this at all. I'm not even going to look towards NZD at all because nothing is in favor of this right now. Maybe I might find one. Maybe. I don't know. No way, man. Come on. It looks so good in the seasonal. Like, literally looks so, so good in the seasonal. And this is the thing, guys. You have to be careful when you're using the seasonal. Like, every other tool on the website, make sure everything is aligned. You know, just because it looks good on one doesn't mean it's going to look good on the other. You know? And I just run through the entire analysis on NZD. You know, there's no good probabilities for us on NZD. And if I check, let me check the COT. Let me see if we can get some on the COT. No, it looks like they're buying. No, 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 no. No, I'm not, I'm not trading this. So, um, on that note, I mean, I'm not going to trade NZD. I'm going to check something else and let me see if I can find something else that's good. If not, ooh, GBP will be a very good asset to trade, to be honest, uh, but not now. Not now. See, right here, right here around the 14th of March, guys. This is money for anybody. Look, guys, from the 14th of March, whoever it is that's looking at this right now, better write that date down. You know, from the 14th of March, right? This yeah. asset called GBP is a, you know, this thing is a robbery. There's a robbery that's going to happen right here. I don't care what they do or what they say. I'm holding this thing to kingdom come. I'm going to hold this damn thing to the end of April. See this entire move? This thing is going to happen. Because they're bringing out, they're rolling out the new passport. We actually have to change our passport there. But yeah, that, that one is definitely for sure that's going to happen. So uh, in terms of this, though, you know, we should see a more depreciation in the pounds coming from the weeks to come. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We will be. So, like, the pounds will be, you know, we'll be looking at a massive dip in the pounds. The pounds is going to have a dip again. So, let's say from tomorrow, ideally from tomorrow or next tomorrow, we should see a further dip in the pounds. We traded pounds last week, right? What did we trade? GBP some USD. Yeah. Oh, lordy lord. Pounds is going to fall again. I think I might go back to this asset. Now, it doesn't look good on the Williams, I must admit. You know, the Williams are already shouting by now. But I don't really care what this Williams says right now. If the seasonal uh, saying sell right now at this point from 25th, let me check the probability for GBP USD. I think we might have to just go back to GBP USD and milk that once more. No, this would be a very, very good, very good trade to milk. Oh, no, what did I just do? No, I'm not trying to book back here no more. Uh, GBP USD. So in this case, I think I might actually have to sell GBP a little bit more. Um, uh, okay, what do we have here? Ah, damn, it doesn't look good. Doesn't really look good for me on the probability. Let me check. Let's check all the GBP assets. Uh, GBP CHF maybe. What I want to see is a massive loss of strength in GBP in, in the probability of any chart, to be honest. GBP, nope, didn't really lose that much strength. If that's the case, we might actually have to just stick with. Check Euro GBP. Euro GBP, yeah. Next, no, next, okay. Let's see, see Euro GBP. Uh, GBP or GBP? Nah, it's 50 50. This is scary. Ah, this is very scary. Four days in a row, 50 50. This year we decide what the percentage is going to be. GBP, your GBP is already like a asset which moves very little. Yeah, but we might see a further fall in GBP. There's a further fall in GBP coming. Look, there's still a massive, there's still a very massive chunk of GBP that has to be done. So it's a very, very big part. You know, this is the annoying part when, when things don't really align. Okay, I found one. GBP, JPY. Sell, 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 sell. sell. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah, it looks good for the end of the month. I'll take that. GBP, JPY. Let me go check GBP, JPY. Okay. 
<laughs> it's been going up. Why have you been going up for, man? Ah, damn. Ah, no, man. This is confusing. I, you know what? I'm just going to stick with what we have. We have free trades. We'll stick this. It's free. No, I checked I check them later because it's very annoying right now because something aligned and then something doesn't align, that, that just annoys me. No, but look, as you can see on the COT, there's a massive short momentum coming. They're, still, they're, they're dumping GBP right now. GBP is being dumped on, so you know, that's good for 64% in open interest. That's very good, you know. And the people that are making this move are only 41 people, 41 compared to the 42 you are buying. So I would say, you know, I would say the GBP is going for a dump. It might happen on the GBP, JPY. I don't know. But um, I'll keep an eye on this one. I'll actually definitely keep an eye on this one. I might have to, I might have to roll with this one on a technical standpoint. You know, if I roll on a technical standpoint on this, maybe, just maybe, I might find some good out of it. But it's very scary because, okay. Um, ah, okay, it's coming back down in here. So let me just uh, let me do this. Um, you know, just you're switching and go back back to technical stuff. So if the when did this say, you know, uh, saying we should sell from the 17th trading day, which is on Tuesday, Tuesday, which is here, 25th. So I mean, this is very heavy risk, guys. Very heavy risk. I'm talking about this. This is a trade I don't even suggest to anyone to take. It. Don't know what, you know how to approach this. So ideally, price might get here on Monday. Ideally, you know, might do another 100 and some pips, or maybe just slightly below it, 116 pips, and then boom, drop to the downside. So ideally, I want to take this trade on tuesday so on tuesday we're gonna come back and check this and trade this but in the meantime man so i have to give a thanks to cutland on this one usdchf will be the one that wins this round and uh you know it's a buy it's a medium risk trade from tuesday if you want to sell something right now at the market opens which is i won't say immediately just wait till um you know till about uh uh what's it called tuesday um Monday tomorrow, then uh, Euro JPY is what you want to sell, and uh, Wednesday to Friday, if you want to very take a very very high risk trade, you know AUD AUD USD will be the one to you know buy from, but USD CHF seems to be the best one right now, followed by Euro JPY, and uh, just to make sure that I'm on the good track, I'm going to check a seasonal for JPY. Make sure it's good, and I think gold too is coming sometimes this week or the end of the week, so next week might be gold. So in that situation, we just have to wait. Um, so 23rd, 24th, uh, yeah, it doesn't really align. So it doesn't, I don't really, it doesn't really matter. So basically, guys, uh, this is what we have to trade. Uh, I'll post this exactly like this into the group uh, on Telegram so you guys can see it. But um, and that's basically what I'm looking at to, you know, to trade this week. I might probably find a new one during the week. I'll check again, make sure that I've gone through everything thoroughly, and then um, I'll let you guys know, okay? Is there any questions? I know this is a very long webinar session. It's very, very long. So is there any questions? No, yeah, no. Thank you. Okay. So in that case, guys, uh, good luck. I hope you guys have this down, screenshot it, and, uh, you know, we'll take this straight. Hopefully we get, uh, you know, we, we get this one too on board. Uh, but we should see uh, some win in this trade. So I'm banking for USDCHF the most. All right, guys, uh, take care of yourself and uh, have uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay, if you have any questions, just drop it to me on Telegram and uh, uh, you know, I'll answer you guys, okay? Thank you and God bless you all. Bye. Take care, Dan. Bye-bye.